Hi, this is Larry Haddix. I am an EDMG 4245 student in the fall semester of 2013. This video's objectives are to give you some helpful hints uh, as future EDMG or EDSE 4245 students uh, to set you up for success. I wanted to give you a few things that I found helpful throughout the class. Uh, I also wanted to go over the modules that I chose and give you some insight into those three modules and a few practicum suggestions that I, I found very helpful. And hopefully this information will help uh, you be successful in your class here in the future at CSU. Okay, the uh, things that I found helpful, one are pretty much items that you can do and items that you can go out and have people assist you with. One, first thing you can do is be a professional. Be a professional in the classroom, be a professional in your conduct, your appearance, be punctual. As you'll find out, Dr. Gardner expects you to be punctual on time, right place, right time, looking uh, like a professional teacher. You'll do that by being proactive, getting things done ahead of time. Also, it's helpful that if you're a participant in the class, you know, be a participant, take part in act activities, let people hear your thoughts. Uh, one of the greatest things about the class is you get to th see the different perspectives that everybody has, and you'll get to see different ideas. Uh, that you may have not ever thought of, but there's some amazing people that are probably sitting to your left and right in the class that have some really wonderful ideas that you hadn't thought of, but after you hear them, you, you know, it's like the light bulb comes on, and you're like, dang, I wish I would, I would have thought of that. And that's something that you can put in your toolkit and use that on the road. The other thing that is helpful is, you know, have an open mind. Uh, don't get bent out of shape if you get slammed on um, a few things, you know. Um, take everything constructively. Don't let it, you know, don't get down the dumps because you think you're getting slammed on something. Take it to heart, you know. I was like, okay, this is something I can work on. Um, and just prepare yourself for that. Dr. Gardner is a very uh, candid indiv individual in which he will give you uh, input of how of the things in which he feels that you need to uh, improve on. Just prepare yourself for that. So don't expect a pat on the back for everything, everything uh, that you're doing. Uh, what I would say, expect just the opposite of it. Don't get bent out of, don't get bent out of shape. You've got to uh, keep yourself focused on getting through, getting through the class, doing what you need to do, and main, maintaining uh, being positive. Uh, other thing I found helpful is that communicate with your instructor and with the safe office if you're having any issues with your practical you know with your cooperating school or your cooperating teacher don't wait until halfway through the semester to say oh my teacher's not letting me uh, take part in these classes or not going to let me teach those you know identify those items up front so that you can take care of them early get into the same classroom and be in the same classroom all the way through your practicum instead of halfway through having to switch classes. There's a couple students that had to switch classes halfway through and it really threw them a curve uh, of curveball. They were able to overcome it, but it was a little bit of stress uh, that was placed on them. So if you see any issues coming up, you know, let Dr. Garner or let the safe office know um, about that so that they can be your advocates uh, for the school. Okay, well, uh, the modules that I selected was the Teaching Retreat, the Bike Tour, and the Anderson Living History event. Um, first of all, the Teaching Retreat is, I would say, is, is a lot of fun. It's, uh, you know, it's one Saturday, uh, and it's only about four hours, four hours long, in which you will go in and...
Okay, the modules in which I selected was the teaching retreat, the bike tour, and the Andersonville Living, Living History event. First of all, the teaching retreat is a must-do. One, it will help prepare you for all the antics that the students will uh, come up with in the classroom. You know, if you've experienced that before and have had to come up with a way of dealing with it when you actually experience it in the classroom, you'll have different strategies or different ideas of dealing with different student-related classroom management issues. So that's what the teaching retreat is all about. It's all about classroom management. Now you'll have to build a lesson and be prepared to build the lesson, but don't get so wrapped up about, about the lesson because most of your time is going to be spent dealing with classroom management issues that Dr. Garner uh, comes up with. So just be prepared for that. The bike tour was the next module in which I chose, in which I chose the Infantry Museum as my uh, spot in which I would give my lesson on. Now, uh, although the Infantry Museum is a wonderful place to go out to, it's a bit of a bike ride. We took us about an hour to bike out there, an hour to bike back, and on the rest of the biking that went around uh, it was for some it was a little strenuous strenuous so um, I would tell someone to go ahead and pick one of the slot the locations around uh, downtown Columbus and use that just because it won't eat up two hours of your bike ride uh, of your uh, bike tour time um, that two hours that we spent going out there and back uh, put a strain on everybody else's time timeline uh, and kept everybody down to you know we were a little bit rushed for time so I would say in hindsight I probably wish I would not have chosen that just because the two hours that we spent biking could have been better used on presenting the lessons and and uh, and we wouldn't have been rushed as we, we were throughout the day. And uh, on a more humorous note, everybody would have been <laughs> feeling a little bit better the next day uh, because I think total we biked over 26 miles that, that day. So even though the um, Infantry Museum is a, a great spot, um, I would suggest that you choose one of the ones that are closer down there just just so that you're not rushed you get to spend more time on your uh, lessons and less time having to pedal up and down down the road and, you know although the bike ride is enjoyable you know we're supposed to be focusing on the, the lessons so uh, do yourself a favor both to allow yourself more time and more flexibility and uh, for some people, uh, give their bodies a break instead of having to bike 26 some miles. Uh, my third module was the Andersonville Living History. Now, a lot of the students chose to go to the uh, Westville. Only three of us chose to go to Andersonville. Now, um, Andersonville, if you don't know, is down uh, kind of southeast of Columbus, and it is the location of the Andersonville prison camp or uh, during the Civil War it was a Confederate uh, prison camp where they kept Union soldiers but it is also the location for the National POW Museum so uh, if you get to go down there you'll be a reenactor you may you'll probably be a reenactor for uh, being as a uh, Union prisoner, uh, I would suggest if you go down there, get your own uniform. You know, maybe borrow some from uh, Dr. Garner, or go out and get your own. Uh, they have some down there, but they're kind of nasty to nasty to wear. Uh, hindsight, I wish I would have uh, had my own to go down there, just because the ones in which they're are kind of in a, a old shed, and you know, 
individuals were knocking bugs and stuff out of them. So if you do go down there, you know, have your own stuff, you know, unless, unless you're comfortable comfortable with that. But um, I'd take your own stuff down uh, because then it, it will fit and it won't you won't be just taking a hodgepodge of the stuff that they have. Um, also, that if you go down there, is that not only do you get to take part in the uh, living history, but you have the opportunity to go to the National uh, Prisoner of War Museum, which is a, a treat in itself. It's just going, getting to go to the museum and, and see that. So not only is it a fulfilling one of the module requirements, but it's an opportunity for you to go see this uh, really remarkable uh, national, uh, national Museum. The last piece of advice that I have for you is practicum suggestions. The biggest one I, I would say is communicate with your cooperating teacher. Get out there and find out what the units that they are, are teaching, what their plan is, you know, how they are going to integrate you into the, into the classroom, uh, and then you can identify any issues up, up front. Uh, and then if you do have any issues, then you can go to the safe office or you can go to Dr. Garner and let them know about it, and they can work, help work out these issues instead of it getting, you know, halfway through it, and you, you get switched around to a, a, a different school or a different a different teacher. So be proactive in communicating with the cooperating teacher and identifying any issues, and then use a safe office, Dr. Gardner, as uh, your advocates to make to make sure that your practicum's going as it should. Uh, the next thing I would say is spend as much time in the classroom as possible. Um, as a middle grades uh, practicum, I had 60 hours for EDMG 4245 and 60 hours for uh, EDSE 41115 of the language arts portion of it. So 120 hours total. In actuality, I spent over 200 hours in the cl in the classroom, and it it paid off so much in the sense that you get to know the kids, you get to <coughs> be looked at as part of the classroom, not just the CSU student that shows up ever, you know, a couple hours each week and is there and, and is gone. And the students actually get to see that you are, you know, an active participant and have a genuine concern uh, and share in their their education. So I would say spend as much time in the classroom as possible. I was very fortunate in which uh, I could be there all day, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. I understand you may not be able to do that because of other classes and everything, but I would tell I would tell you, just don't be that student that pops in there for two hours twice twice a week and is gone. Because then, when it comes time for you to be teaching lessons, those kids are going to look at you like, okay, you're here for a couple out a couple hours, and you haven't built that rapport with them. But if you're there as much as as much as possible build that rapport, get to, get to know them, and when it comes time for you to be getting looked at and evaluated, that you'll be able to tell the, tell the students, okay, you need to sit down and you need to focus, and they will actually do that instead of looking at you and saying, uh, who's this and why are you telling me to do, do this all of a sudden when before you weren't. So spend as much time in the classroom uh, as you can. Get to, know, get to know the kids, get to know their, their mannerisms, what their strengths, what their weaknesses are, how, uh, what they take, what you know, accommodations they need, what they need to make to make uh, them uh, engage students. My last piece of advice that I would have for you is finally have fun. Have fun with the time you get to spend with the students. You know, they're all exceptional kids. And just remember that every one of them, you're affecting their lives, you know, and you have the opportunity to make a difference uh, with every one of the students that you're, you're with in the classroom. But also, enjoy your fellow CSU students. Get to know them, uh, have some fun times with them, you know, use them as a resource to, to, lean, on each, uh, to lean on each other for you know moral support or just some advice of somebody that's a technical technical uh, 
quiz on something and you're challenged on it, then, you know, use that resource. You know, get to know your fellow CSU students there in the class and uh, work together to help each other out. You know, like I said, have fun. Good luck. I hope you do well in the, cl in the class. And then you'll hopefully be moving on to student teaching like I am. Good luck, y'all.